All right, what's going on? It's Bobby Skinner talking Giants, and this is your Week 15 Giants film review. In this, uh, going over the Saints' loss, uh, a couple things from this. I want to start with Tommy DeVito, who you're looking at. Obviously, this wasn't some like great game by DeVito. He didn't have some of the wow throws that he's had in other games. But I actually thought just like playing the quarterback position on film, this was his second best game after the Packers game. I think he's getting better at like understanding offense in the NFL. There's still issues that we're going to go through. But for the most part, there weren't these glaring big, how can you make these mistake type issues. There wasn't really any horrible sacks that he took. Um, and I thought this was just a game where the offensive line let him down. Uh, and he wasn't playing like a horrible defense to me like the Commanders, the Packers, who I don't really like the way they played defense. On the defensive side of the ball, this is, in two years, the game where I am most frustrated with what, how Wink Martindale played this. Like, they played soft, and you, we're going to go through it. They played soft, and we're going to show you the times where they didn't and how it worked to perfection essentially every single time. But they played soft, and they allowed Derek Carr to play his best game as a Saint. I don't know if he was inspired by Joe Barry, the Packers defensive coordinator, or what, but they just allowed Derek Carr to have his best game as a Saint and do whatever he wanted. You know, Wink talks about we dictate terms. They didn't dictate shit in this game. All they did was, you know, dictate what open hole in the zone uh, that Derek Carr is going to throw to and how he's going to have no pressure put on him. So we'll, let's get into it. Make sure to like and subscribe. That stuff matters, especially as, you know, Giants are losing and the numbers won't be as big. All right, let's get into it. First play. This is a good decision by DeVito. Uh, throws a deep ball, ball here to Darius Slayton. Just isn't able to get enough on it. Under throws him. It, it does happen, but I like the decision. First play of the game, trying to set the tone. Um, reading what the defense is doing. You see this safety, the you know the rip safety. He rotates down. DeVito controls him with his eyes. We'll see from the other angle. Darius Slayton, really good release here. Nice double tap. See, just get him. Bam. Good release. Able to stack him. Get in front of him. And just not a good throw. You're going to see from the other angle, DeVito's eyes. Like just holding that safety we're looking at. Right? See, eyes holding that safety in the middle of the field. Turn. And just, just not a good ball. Not a good ball, but good decision. Uh, especially I, I like it on the first play of the game. Next, and I know I talked about how DeVito played well. We're going over some bad stuff uh, first. This actually ends up being like a, a, a wow play by Saquon Barkley, but this should have been a nice, easy chunk play. So this is the throw to Dar uh, Saquon Barkley where he makes a spectacular catch. So they're running that concept that we've went through on this film review all the time, that shock concept with the little stick. The slot fade and the hitch out here, and then we've talked about too, is you could put anything you want on the back side of this. So they have Waller on this dig route, and then Saquon on the choice. So pretty quickly into this, they've got this bracketed, and you got man on this. You're not going to, you know, you got off man coverage on this with safety presence. They're manning up the hitch. So DeVito, rightfully so, moves off of that, right? You have five. You have a five defenders for three players over here. So which means you're going to have three for two on the backside because they end up rushing three. So his eyes come off and he's got Waller. Like Waller, it's here. He's looking at it and he just doesn't pull the trigger on it. I don't know if he thought that this safety might be slamming down on it or what, because originally he's here, right? So maybe he's expecting this safety to be here, but this safety bails into a deep half. And this is here. Now we're going to see him hit Waller on a similar play later in this game. But this is here all day long. You've got a clean pocket. Throw this. Throw this. You throw this 10 times out of 10. He doesn't. Scrambles and we see the wow play. We react. But in reality, that's not good quarterback play. Again, like good job. Okay, get off of it quick, right? It's not there. Let's get to the back side of this concept. It's here. We should be firing it in here. Like you got a big bodied Waller. Good route runner. Escapes the pocket, but good on Saquon Barkley for saving this. Because that is a wow catch. Pulls it in into a shoulder. Good shit for Saquon Barkley. Next play. This is where protection holds up, and this is where having a guy like Darren Waller can be an issue, right? Where it's like you do see the wow plays, but this can leave you in trouble. 
So it ends up being not a sack, but a, essentially a sack, right? He scrambles for an extra couple yards on third down. Giants run this wave concept, which they wanted. They ran a, you know, Brian Dable ran it a lot in Buffalo. Wanted to run it last year early, realized they didn't have the protection for it. And with DeVito and the way he plays quarterback, they've kind of reinstalled it into the offense more. Where you have the deep post right here with Wandale, and then you have these two deep crossers in route, uh, dig routes, you know, deep crossing up. Now, got to get the timing on this a little better. And that's a lot because Slayton's got a free release and Hyde's dealing with press, which he's not good at, and he gets forced way too inside. Right, so this does mess up timing, but it still works versus three deep zone, where you're gonna leave these areas open, right? Because this corner is gonna take this. You have this out here, and then you've got this safety bailing, right? Doesn't want to get beat on a deep post or whatever. And then this corner chasing, you've got this hole right here, right? That's 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 what you're running this play for, is to get that exact thing here. But you've got Darren Waller blocking. And protection is not able to hold up. But this is a this is a third down shot play conversion, right? This goes from you know third and seven at the forty, third and eight at the forty, to a big play first down at the twenty. You know early, you know second drive of this game. But that's what happens when you do have a bad, just a flat out bad blocking tight end, right? And again, Waller, valuable, makes a ton of plays. I think he had some plays left on the field, like we showed. Uh that sucks. That's a big chunk play left off because your tight end couldn't even really get a piece of that block. All right, on defense, this is the third. I'm, we're going to focus a lot on third down on the defense, right? Because I think that's where their warts and their good plays showed up. Uh, so third down, you've got uh, Jihad Ward in the A gap. You got the linebackers walk, uh, you know, uh, moved up. Two deep safeties, right? This is. This is hard to diagnose. You know, you know they're going to be in some type of zone, but you don't know exactly what they're going to be in, right? Are they going to rotate this down into a cover three? Are they going to sit in a cover two and drop these guys back? And the Giants do this inverted cover two that they've really started to like, or it could be you know cover six depending on this, right? Because you could see this being, uh, you know, or an inverted cover three where you have these three of the deep players. But immediately, right, you've got essentially. Two for three lined up over here. Obviously, this is an outside linebacker, but you use him as a pass rusher, and you have this player right here. But if you're running like this is, where this is all to the sideline, no inbreakers, you're thinking, okay, if they don't rush this passer, we've got numbers, but they do. Now, they're going to have Cordell Flott bail, right? We're going to invert this. He's going to bail deep. Now we have a three deep zone. You get Deontay Banks on a blitz. He's a free rusher, right? You got Dex and Okereke doing their thing. Isaiah Simmons getting upfield, and Derek Carr, he's got he's got Deontay Banks screaming down his his neck. Like he's got to think quick. So what does he do? He checks it down the Taysom Hill, right? You you throw hot on this. Well, guess what? Now you've you've got that bracketed with two outside linebackers and Jihad Ward and Aziz Ojolari. Great tackle by Aziz. You get a third down. Like those, those are the type of blitzes that Wink Martindale likes to run, confuse the quarterbacks, and it works successfully. Now let's go on to a third and five on the next drive. This is not Wink Martindale. I mean, when has this been ever when been Wink Martindale where you just let them run shallow cross on you, right? Where you have this deep sit and then the drive route right here. I mean, we're in two deep safety. We're in cover two, right? I mean, the first down marker is the 42-yard line. Look at everyone. Look at everyone. All behind the sticks. All behind the sticks. you got no pressure up front. When has ever Wink Martindale just run defense like this? So they can run shallow cross. You throw it to him. And again, this is on Wink Martindale to me. Like, I can't believe they played this off. Of course he's going to get the first down on this. Unless you have the best damn pass rushers in the NFL who are just going to get there in half a second, right? Hey, do I want more out of Kayvon and Aziz? Absolutely. But I don't think there's anything they could have done on this rep. 
Like that's that's soft defense. That's letting them do whatever they want. Now you got a third and four, uh, you know, down here in the in the low red zone, and they get a touchdown again. Rushing four, playing either you know a cover two or cover six red zone uh, zone, you know, two high zone coverage, right? We rushing four. We got time. We allowed Derek Carr to step up. Of course, someone's going to get open. And this is good play design by the uh, by the Saints, where you work, work these two corners, which occupies Banks and this safety. This corner occupies these, you know, these corner and safety, right? Because, like, let's just let's just play it through on this. Let's say Pinnock just chases on this. Well, you know, or or McKinney, right? You just th- you throw it you throw it inside. You know, if the corner doesn't, then you throw it, you know, you throw it, uh, to, you know, to their, to their, sorry, throw it, you know, you throw it inside here. If not, you throw it outside towards the pylon. Giants and Saints run kind of like this little mesh right here where these guys sit. So that occupies these two defenders. Okay, RK has to stay here just in case these turn into return routes. Pinnock has to play this right now. I think Pinnock... Should be getting off to this. But I don't think it really matters. Like I don't think that it stops it from being a touchdown. We'll see it from the other angle. But you just rush forward and you sit in the zone. Like we're not dictating shit on third down. I mean look at this. This is a quarterback's dream. Right? We're reading the corner. Okay we've got these these three underneath. We know that we're not going to throw these. And guess what? We still honestly could throw these and, and convert for a first down. Well, let's just let's just make sure this this linebacker is staying on us. Play the middle of the field. I'll step up. I'll fire it in there, and I got a no name wide receiver scoring a touchdown on me. That is that to me. I'm I can't believe Wink Martindale's running defense like that versus Derek Carr, who is horrible under pressure, an offensive line who sucks at picking up protections, uh, picking up blitzes, and no true wide receiver you really got to worry about. They did this. I mean, they. It's one thing when you're playing like the Minnesota Vikings last year with Justin Jefferson and T.J. Hawkinson, and you know a, a decent run game with Dalvin Cook. Like this is ridiculous. Now here we're gonna see. Hey, third and four. Let's blitz Pinnock. Let's throw a different coverage at them. We're gonna get a sack. How about that? What do you know? It works. So you got Pinnock lined up out here. Again, they're gonna run an inverted cover two where Simmons. Is going to bail. Play the deep half. And the Saints run. Essentially that same play that we ran earlier, right? You got this little sit right here. It's from a different formation. But you've got all this covered. Guess what? You got Jason Pinnock beating a running back block on a blitz. You've got this bracketed inside. No carry K in coverage. And you get a sack. It works. Like they run a full, you know, they run a full slide on this, right? So you got a one-on-one with Pinnock in the back. I don't know what the fuck this back's doing with this little fake shit. I don't, I don't I'm trying to fake that he's going to get a cut block and slow him down or what. But that's, I'd be, I'd be pissed off if I was his coach. Pinnock does a good job doing that little hezzy. And you get a sack. What do you know? When you throw blitzers, when you throw different looks at guys and not just sit back in your f- soft ass zone and rush four with guys eight yards off. Guess what? Success happens. Shocking. Shocking. Uh, we, If you guys want to see all like the bad run plays with Saquon Barkley, I did it all in the offensive line report this week, so I'm not going to do much from that. But it, I want to show how it helps with these zone reads for the quarterback. Right? And I love the way the Giants designed this because these guys are playing aggressive. Right? So you've got this nickel corner who's essentially playing as a linebacker right here. Uh Versus this pony uh, two-back personnel. So, you allow this receiver, who's got a tight split. He's going to crack on this, right? And obviously, everyone's reading this, right? So, you're sucking them up this way. Especially when they're trying to stop the run. So, you read with that. You just, hey, Hodgins, you're just trying to pin him down. You're just trying to pin him down. Good job. Bellinger, sifting as the lead blocker. He gets out here. I'd like to see both Bellinger and DeVito be a little more assertive in this. This is a nice little chunk run, though, right? And the Giants going to get any running. And plays the run. DeVito keeps. 
Hodgins doesn't have to block the guy because he, they're biting so hard on the Saquon run. I'd like to see DeVito maybe just press out here and then cut it up, which he does. But Bellinger, uh, I'd like to see a little more assertiveness there. But nice, nice run for the Giants offense. And hey, here, guess what? We're going to come back to Waller. Same route. Similar concept. Third and 18. Third and 18 conversion, 29-yard pass to Darren Wall. That's the difference he makes, right? Just, hey, we've got... We've got all these guys up at the line, right? They bail. They run to they run to the you know to the strength. You got this safety bailing, and you just got a one on one with Darren Waller. Easy. Just a slight outside track by Waller. Bam. Good run after the catch. You'll see it from the other angle. DeVito's reading these linebackers, right? These linebackers bail this way. Okay, quick, easy. Fired in. A little behind him. Wall is able to make a play. 29 yard. 29 yard catch for Darren Waller. Good stuff. All right, back on defense. Now, the Giants did a really good job defending Taysom Hill. This was the one time that they didn't. But basically, I just want to show you what they did when they defended Taysom Hill. Um,. They went zero safety every time. Obviously, they have safeties on, but just you see they've got nobody deep. They just went zero safety, blitz, and just play man across the board, right? Now, they're not lining up on the line of scrimmage because you the run threat. Um, now, here's what they would do, though. And I don't know where the miscommunication happened on this, right? You can see Lynn Bowden in, in motion, right? And first, he's out here uncovered. McKinney was usually the one covering him, and I think McKinney did screw up on this, right? You see Okereke... You know, signaling something for, hey, here. So he motions, saying, hey, that's you. That's you. And and I'm telling you, they motioned him around. And McKinney just, like in these other plays, and just chased him. Maybe I should have left some of that in here. But just take my word on it. And for some reason, they just don't do it, right? No one picks him up. Right? You've got uh, Okereke essentially as a spy. McFadden's manned up on the fullback. Man, man. Man, and McKinney is supposed to be manned up here, so he just bails. I like, hey, if we're going to make a mistake, at least do something. Don't just sit there like, you know, with your thumb up your ass. But they're looking for a deep shot against a zero safety, right? But you leave Lynn Bowden wide ass open, and you get lucky that Taysom Hill can't hit this. Because that would have been a nice, you know, chunk play. And if you get this block down, he makes one guy miss. That can be get you down to the 20. So they got lucky on that, but that is the way they played them. And here I want to show you another example of one of the few times that Wink Martindale threw some true blitzes at the Saints. This linebacker switch blitz. Right? So watch. We're going to get a hard count from Carr. Bam. We get the hard count, right? McFadden shows. All right. Hey, look. We got a blitzer there. We got a blitzer there. So the Saints are going to go big on big. They're going to go bam. Bam, bam, tackling tight end with the chip out here. He's going to take McFadden. We know McFadden's coming. And then Kamara on okay, okay, right? Okay, we got everyone accounted for. Well, this is why I think you should have blitzed them more because they do this big on big shit and you get free rushers all the time. I don't like the way they set protections with the Saints. I guess why I don't, I don't like big on big. Uh, especially when you're facing blitzes like uh, blitz, you know, teams like Wink Martindale. But even though Wink Martindale didn't show up uh, and do what he usually does. So, hey, we got everyone accounted for, right? We got everyone accounted for. Kamara, he's picking up Okereke. But McFadden is not here trying to, he's trying to rush the passer. But he's just trying to set up Okereke, right? So he's going to go outside in, rip, occupy him. And that's going to stop Kamara from getting over. And you got Okereke rushing free. And you get an intentional crowning from Derek Carr. Essentially a sack by Okereke. Nice. Look at that closing speed from Okereke. Like he has become. It's a shame. Like I, want, I, I think. Actually it's not a shame. It's awesome that the Giants have Dexter Lawrence. But I want to like. I want to look at him like. Yeah that's our best player. But Dex is our best player on defense obviously. Uh, so it's not a shame. It's a good thing. We need, we need more uh, debates like that. Uh, 
I think they should count that as a sack. N- new rule. Intentional groundies count as a sack. Especially when these guys get paid like by by off of these numbers. Hey, look, guess what? A blitz works. How about that? How about that? What do you what do you fucking know? A blitz works. Here is another example of the Giants not being good at zone coverage, and specifically one Cordell Flott. Now everyone said on this, what the hell is Adore Jackson? What happened here? You know, I think Adore Jackson had a bad play in this game, but I come away watching the film and ask me, what what should have Adore Jackson done? Now this play is not about Adore Jackson. The Giants are in cover three, and I'm assuming they are in man match cover three, right? A three deep zone, and man match is we we talked about this on the podcast. This is pretty well known. That, like this is the defense that Bill Belichick and Nick Saban created on the Browns in the '90s. Is hey, when you're running a three deep zone, the seams are going to be open, right? So to take those seams to keep it simple, this you know these two defenders, if the if the number two receiver goes vertical, you turn in the man and you carry it vertical, right? Pretty simple. Now usually. You want to play outside leverage with this. It's hard for Flot to play outside leverage with this because what you do is if they take it and out, you cover it. If they break it in, uh, the linebackers take it, and if they go vertical, you stay with it. But this is where they attack these three deep zones by the Saints. So when you don't have any pass rush, too. So look at this little head nod from Jawan Johnson, right? That little head nod, Flock, okay, he's got the flats. I will now cover the flats, right? Well, he turns it up. Flawed is still under here playing the flats. And you've got a guy wide ass open up the seams. And this is where Flawed has just continued to struggle, man. He just makes so many mistakes in zone coverage. So many mistakes in zone coverage. And it, it burns the Giants for a touchdown on this play. Next play, we're going to run cover three again. And this is where like, I get frustrated. This chunk play to A.T. Perry. Look at this. Look at this cushion and this leverage. We've got eight yards of cushion with outside. Le- He's inside the numbers. A door is outside the numbers. Like this is as simple as it gets. Right? This is a sim- this is this is bread and butter. Like, okay, this is easy for an offense. Right? Okay, just, hey, have the back out here to occupy the flats. Make him play the flats, honestly. Let's run a deep slant. Wide ass open. You get a high school receiver converts this catch. All right, so the, how, how am I supposed to be mad at Adore Jackson when we've got him aligning up eight yards off with that, that outside leverage? How am I supposed to be mad at him for that? I mean, it just makes it easy for these cats. Right, and they do some play action, which occupies Simmons. I get, I get that Simmons is supposed to be in this zone eventually, but you got him playing on the line, so play like you can't be mad at Simmons for not being in this zone, even though he's, you know, that's a technically where his zone is supposed to be. You get, like, how can you be? He's got to play the run. It'd be, it'd be one thing if, again, you had this outside leverage. And Simmons, you have Okereke lined up right here, and then Simmons right here, right? Because then you protect yourself against that. Now, I still don't like it because good quarterbacks will just throw it past that fucking window, um, you know, against unless you have like a really good coverage linebacker. But that's just too easy. That's way too easy. All right, last play of the Saints offense. Now, Giants, I thought Bobby O'Karake and Mike McFadden played a, a very stellar game in the run defense. This is the one time where Kamara, who I think is like the king of the cutbacks in the NFL, got them, right? And this is where he's got to make you play super disciplined. Not just discipline, like, you know, gap integrity, but you got to play discipline within your gaps. So the Giants, this is zone. You got a stack box. We got everything we want in this, right? We got every gap accounted for, right? We've got Nacho out here. We got Cave on setting the edge. Dex, Okereke's filling out here. Good stuff, and that allows hey, that allows your your will linebacker, your, uh, you know, your your weak linebacker to play fast and aggressive. Get downhill, right? Just play your gap. That's what you're doing. Make a tackle for a loss. But just Kamara plays this so well that hey, you gotta you gotta stay tight 
on this hip of this of this guard. You got to stay tight on this hip of this guard and not just get upfield. Because if you stay tight on this hip, you force Kamara into this. Or he's cutting back into your arms. Instead, we don't stay tight on this hip. We get upfield. And Kamara presses this enough. Gets upfield. Bam, a nice chunk run for them. I think it was like the their, probably their longest run of the day. Uh, but I thought they did o- overall. But that was something we talked about going into the game. About how like you got to play really disciplined against Kamara. Because he's the king of the cutbacks in the zone. Alright, last three plays on offense. Some negative on DeVito. Giants run and smash. Kind of like a smash or like like backside sail, right? Where it's a one, two, three read. Uh, but that's long developing. But you get Waller on the corner route. You get uh, you know, Slayton on this pivot, whip route, man coverage. All right? You've got uh, Tyron Matthew with outside leverage. Working inside track, right? Working inside track. Get him. Bam. Like you get you get Mathieu biting on that, trying to stop a dig route, pop back out, open. And DeVito just misses it. Just a flat out miss. Now, I told you I wouldn't talk about any of the run plays because we or the Saquon handoffs because we went through it all in the offensive line port. This is the one that I gotta put in here. This is makes me so mad that they did not audible out of this. Look at this defensive front. Look at this defensive front. Look at this. You've got a wide nine. You've got nobody in the B gap. You've got this linebacker here. Like now they still should have had success if Bredesen plays this better, right? And I broke this I broke this down the technicals of like how JMS played this well, Pew played this well, and Bredesen screwed this up. But this should have been easy, right? You shouldn't have been relying on someone having a good block for this to happen. Check out of this. Check out of this and to either tackle wrap or tackle trap. Or, or not tackle wrap. A wrap pl- a run or a, or a trap. Very simple, right? Just it's the simplest of checks where you either. Uh, now I would do a uh, wrap because this guy's so wide. Where you have Thomas go and block this out like he does. You have JMS pin this down. You have Pew work to this linebacker, and then you have Bredesen pull around and go up to the safety, right? And if this RPO action on the backside doesn't occupy uh, Tyron Matthew, but like it does, well, then you have Pew work to the backside, you know, uh, you know, backside linebacker or safety in this part and, and Honey Badger, and then you have Pew uh, Bredesen wrap up to here, pull up to here, and then you get a one-on-one with this. But this should have been easy, right? We should be pinning this down, blocking out on this. Pew's coming to here, and Bredesen should have been pulling up to either this safety or this safety. Basically, whoever showed up in his in his way first should have been a one-on-one with this, and Saquon should have been cutting off of this. Instead, you get a three-yard run. That's that's insane that that's, that's the gain you had versus that front. Like, look at that. That you got a three yard gain on this versus this front. That's fucking insane to me. Check out of that shit. And then last play I want to talk about. Hey, DeVito ran mesh well, which he has very much struggled running as the Giants QB. This is good stuff. You get a versus man coverage. I like the way the Giants set this up. Right? Like you are in a mesh formation, but usually on this, you would have Hyatt be the mesh, uh, the second mesh receiver on this. So you motion Juan Dale in, right? So again, you have like this press man. So if he's the mesh receiver, this ends up being a lot harder, right? Because you're pressed up, right? You're going to have him covered like Waller's covered, uh, you know, like Slayton's covered, like Saquon's covered. Instead, when you motion Juan Dale in, you force him to come uh, into some off coverage, get underneath this. They're in man coverage. You identified as man. They're in man coverage. That's gonna be that's just too much for him to make that play. Wide ass open. Right? Wide ass open for a fourth down conversion. Right? Good read by DeVito. Where you're reading Saquon on the on on the rail route. It's not there. We get back. We're reading this linebacker. 
This linebacker just sits in the middle of the field. You throw it. Good stuff. Fourth down conversion. All right. Get off the rail. Pop back. You're reading this linebacker. Good anticipation on it. With pressure at your feet. Good stuff. So, I know we didn't show a bunch of like great stuff from DeVito. And there wasn't flashy plays. But I thought he just decision-wise making had you know a, a pretty damn good game. Missed some throws. Obviously, he had some plays he wanted to be back. But I thought offensive line play uh, hampered him a little bit. Uh, and we saw that on a couple. And then defensively, I, I'm very frustrated with this. I, I've never been... I've never disagreed with the way DeWink played defense more in a game. And that's the crazy thing. This isn't the way that Wink Martindale plays defense, right? This is the exact opposite. And there's been games where, like, the Giants are giving up 40-plus points. So I'm like, hey, yeah, Wink could have done some things better, but it's the personal issue. This should have been a Wink masterclass. This should have been a Derek Carr disaster game. And instead, it was his best game as a Saint. And I, I, I have a hard time living with that, especially when they were technically fighting for the playoffs. I have a hard time living with that. Obviously, defense is... One more games for the Giants this year, and there's you know, they're better. But this could have been a game. This could have been one of those games, and it, and it fell flat. And you allowed them to do whatever they want. I'd right, appreciate you guys liking, subscribe, and let's go big blue.